Hello everybody, we're going to talk about the C++ syntax, especially compared to other languages. So just as a quick note, there's a resource on the website. Um, if you are interested in seeing a side-by-side -side comparison of different sets of programs, which might be helpful. The good news is, is that C++ is generally fairly close to what you're used to from other languages. There's Conceptually, it's pretty much the same, which is really good. Um, what we have to really worry about is going to be the syntax. That's the part that's new, okay? So this is just going to give us a general setup of what a program is going to look like, and then we'll kind of walk through each section together. So the first thing to note is that comments are typically designed with sync quotes, uh, two quotes together uh, for a single line, or with this kind of quote star for multi-line comments. Uh, either one is fine. Uh, you use them in different situations depending on how many lines you're trying to comment. Uh, the thing you may be probably are familiar with or have seen is the semicolon is going to end every line. So that's unlike Python where you can just leave a line with white space. You have to always put a semicolon. Now, what's important to note is that we are ending executable lines of code with a semicolon. So for example, a um, we'll learn that this is essentially an if statement right here, right? And then this is a function. Those do not have semicolons. So the only thing that has a semicolon is a line of code that's actually going to execute. Now, uh, we separate code blocks in C++ with curly braces. So in, as opposed to Python, where we were used to uh, spacing things out with tabs or spaces, here it's a little bit more explicit in that we're using curly braces, curly braces to begin and end a block of code. So if you want to start an if statement, you have your curly brace here. And then when you want to end your if statement, you put your curly brace there, and so on and so forth. And what I want to point out to you is that because the idea of white space is not as important, you could technically write code that looked like this, where it's all on one line, which is really different from Python. Um, we typically don't do that. We, we still basically space the code out the same way you would with Python. Um, I just want to point out that the spacing doesn't matter. It's actually defined by curly braces. Now, this is probably one of the biggest things that you'll have to get over um, with C++, which is that when you define a variable in C++, you must always specify what kind it is. So normally in Python, we might have just said, this is um, day of the week or age. Well, now we actually have to give it a very specific type. Right? So the types are similar to what you're used to in other languages. Um, but here we have to be very explicit when we make the variable. So that's one, one new thing. Okay, um, let me go back just for a moment. So what we're going to be using in class really are these ones right here. So int is just like you're familiar with from other languages. It's basically a number without a decimal. Um, we're going to use double. Uh, double is going to be a number with a decimal. Now in both of these cases, in both the int and the double, we'll learn that there's some variations of them in later uh, weeks. But for now, let's just consider that int is going to be a number like 7, and double is going to be a number like 7.2. Okay. And then for strings, same thing, We've got our quotes, as you'd be used to, quote, quote means the string. And then bool is going to be our boolean. The only subtle difference about a boolean from, say, Python is it's lowercase true and lowercase false. That's the only really difference. Otherwise, it works generally the same way. Okay, constants. So we kind of had constants in Python, although not 100%. Here in C++, we really do have a constant, meaning if you make a variable and you say it is constant, you cannot change it ever or you'll get an error. And it's actually very simple. You simply put const in front of the variable declaration. So you would say const int and then you give the name of the variable and you assign it. And just like in Python, we use all caps as kind of a style. Okay, 
That's just our convention. It's not required, but it's sort of the style that we use. Okay, a quick note about typing. So variable typing, as we know, the kind of variable something is. Um, Python is what we call a weakly typed language, meaning it's okay to make a variable that is an int, that is a string, that is a double, assign it back and forth. You can do either one. In C++, it's what's called strongly typed. And that just means if you have a variable and you have it as a string, you cannot then reassign that variable to an integer. You would get an error. So just basically the takeaway of this is that variables stay the same type for their whole life. That's all. Okay, so functions. Uh, functions similar to Python. Uh, there's a couple subtle differences. One is that you have to explicitly state the return type. So this kind of goes along with the idea that a variable in Python, you have to say the kind of variable it is. And so in Python, or in C++ rather, if you want a function to return a particular value, you have to say what that value is. So for example, this function returns a double. So there's the name of my function. Now, if I want to, I need to tell the compiler that it's going to return a double. And so I put the word double right before the definition. So I say return type, and then the name of the function, and then whatever parameters I want here. So it could be int, this function returns an int, or string, this function returns a string, or whatever it is you want. Um, one thing to note is if a function does not return a value, we must tell the compiler that, and the way we say this function does not return a value is we use the word void. So you're always going to put something before the function definition. It's either going to be void or it's going to be a type. Now, continuing on, same thing. We must declare all variable types. So if, you're ha if you have parameters in your function, right, input parameters to a function, you have to say what kind of thing it is. Is it an int? Is it a string? Is it a double? Is it a float? You don't have to worry about void. There's no void for input parameters. Void is only uh, for the return type. So otherwise, functions are going to look pretty much the same. It's just you'll see the return type out front, and then you'll see all of the parameters have types specified as well. That's the only difference. OK, if statements. These are actually pretty much the same, so that's the good news. Um, we have if, and then the new thing is that we have parentheses, so that's a little bit of a syntax difference. So if and then my condition, like age equals 7, um, uh, birthday greater than 7, or whatever it might be. And then we have our curly braces, which we already described as being the set of a code block. And then instead of an elif, in, Py in C++ it's called an else. So we have if here, right? Here's my if, defined like this. And then I then have else, and that's set up like this. And you could imagine you could have else if, else if, else if, and then else, just like you did in other languages. Um, that's the only thing to consider about this. Uh, conditional statements, right? These are what we're used to in terms of true and false, yes or no. And so here's what it looks like if x is less than or equal, or less than, sorry, f, x is equal to 2, equal, equal to, um, then this code would be, would run or would not run. And here would be another example, y not equal to 10, right? So you can kind of see how these two uh, versions would look. A while loop. Now, we're gonna, not going to use a while loop all that much because uh, our firmware ends up having a loop in it anyways, and so sometimes it gets a little bit confusing. But just to show you, it works sort of the same way that you're used to. You've got your while, you've got your condition here with parentheses, you've got your curly braces, and your code goes inside of it. So perfectly fine. Um, now, we can talk about for loops, but we'll hold off on for loops a little bit. We will use them later, um, but it's something that we'll revisit in the future, in a future class. Because it is different. Um, that's probably one of the more significant differences you'll see in C++.